Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. This video, to some degree or another, is a direct response to a question from OBO Guy 2000. He recently submitted a question in which he asked me to share some of my biggest CGC mistakes. And in his question, he kind of pointed to the fact that maybe I I didn't have any mistakes because I know what I'm doing. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that I have made many mistakes when it comes to this hobby of ours. And I've made many a mistake specifically when it comes to CGC. In fact, so many of the videos that you watch here on my channel are actually derived from either mistakes that I have directly made or observations of things that I want to try to avoid. And so I, I create these videos from observations or from my actual experiences to say, hey, here are some things for you to consider. But I've never really created a video in which I actually showed you some of my mistakes. But rest assured, I make plenty of them. So never, never be in doubt about that. I am not perfect. I continue uh, growing and learning in this hobby just like many of you out there. And in fact, I learn a tremendous amount from you guys in terms of the comments that you post up on my videos and the messages that you send me every single day. But in this video, what I am going to do is to share with you a couple of mistakes that I made along with some observations that go along with those mistakes. And then I'm also going to try to answer a couple of other questions that people have asked me with regard to CGC and CGC submissions. So there's kind of like a two part video. And so definitely uh, stay tuned because I think that there's gonna be some things here, at least I hope in this video that might actually benefit you. So my very first example is is a comic book that I sent in uh, back when I first started slabbing comics uh, at the beginning kind of sort of 2018. And I was in the habit of slabbing everything. If it moved, I slabbed it. <laughs> and so there was a lot of learning that came from that. There was a lot of waste that came from that because I was slabbing literally everything that moved. And an example of that is this book right here. This is Infinity Countdown, Adam Warlock, number one. And uh, many of you may never have even seen this book before. Uh, this book is uh, it's pretty worthless. It's pretty worthless. Uh, I, I think that it might have an FMV of, of 15 bucks or something like that. Um, I paid a lot more for this book, uh, than it is actually worth. Um, so yeah, when I, when I offer up tips and I say, Hey, when a new book comes out, you might want to wait to evaluate the value of that book before sending it in. Or if I say, Hey, if there is a book, you want to evaluate the, the FMV of that book versus the cost of getting that book slabbed. Yeah comes from this right here. I, I spent, I can tell you, I spent a healthy amount of money getting this book um, shipped, cleaned, pressed, graded, shipped back a lot more than what this book is actually worth. But uh, what came out of this were some lessons, some very valuable lessons, some videos that I was able to create um, that I was able to pass back to you guys. But uh, yeah, Infinity Countdown, Adam Warlock, number one, lesson one. <laughs> So we'll, we'll set that one off to the side. Uh, th this next book, honestly, is, is to some degree a continuation of the first. Uh, I was slabbing everything. I think these might have actually been in the exact same bundle that was sent off to CGC to be graded. So I spent, again, a healthy amount of money to send this one in. Uh, this book, I don't think I actually pressed. I actually felt like this book was actually in good shape. Did not press the book. Uh, sent it in. And it actually came back at a 9.6, which isn't bad. The challenge, however, is that there are absolutely no sales, according to Go Collect, for this comic. The 9.8, I think, is worth like 44 bucks. Uh, but because I didn't press it, the book actually came back at a 9.6. And I can tell you, you probably cannot see it here. There is a massive crease right here in the comic that could have been fixed with a quick press. And it probably would have resulted in a 9.8. But it came back at a 9.6. And uh, yeah, have, it's clearly worth less than $44. And if it had been worth $44, it probably would have been just uh, north 
of what the costs were to actually get this book shipped, clean, pressed, graded, and shipped back. So again, just another uh, good lesson here about, you know, examining your comics before sending them in, making sure that you know what you're sending, making sure that you know what the FMV is for that book, evaluating the condition of the book prior to actually sending it in, or else you could get a pretty awesome Infinity Countdown Prime number one that uh, sits in a box since it came back. Yeah, lessons, valuable, I tell you. All right, this next book is uh, a book that I've actually spoken about several times. I have mentioned this book several times, uh, and it was one of my biggest mistakes uh, because I thought that I uh, was doing a good job of inspecting my comics, uh, but at the time that I sent this in, my inspection was nothing more than looking at the front of the comic and calling it good. Never bothered to take the book out of the plastic and flip through it. Uh, never bothering to look at the back side of the comic. I just looked at the front in the plastic and said that must be a book that is worthy of CGC. And uh, yeah, when that happens, what you get back is a X-Force number two, five point, uh, a 5.5. A 5. Yeah, so I had one 9.8 that came back. Pretty cool book. This one, I swore, was a 9.8. It actually came back at a 5.5. And you might wonder why, because it looks pretty good from the front. Um, there are massive fingerprints in the back side of this comic. I'm not even sure if you guys are going to be able to see it. But over here, when this book was printed, someone, uh, someone's fat finger touched into the black and actually... Uh, removed some of the ink from the black sections and then in the white section actually transferred that ink over to the white section so i remember reading the notes for this book and i was like i wonder why this book at such a low grade it said fingerprints i'm like no way there's fingerprints as soon as the book comes back i turn it over i look on the back side and i just kind of nodded my head <laughs> so again just another really important lesson about Taking a look at the comics, front, back, inside, making sure you really know what it is that you're actually sending in before you send it in. Uh, and certainly before you blame CGC for making a mistake, it's like take some time on the front end. And I can tell you that I have sent in over the last couple of months about 50 books uh, only two, and when I did a, a pre-screen uh, for, for many of those 49-ish books, only four of them have actually been rejected at a 9.6 to 9.8. So I think I'm doing really good at um, getting books, examining books, uh, cleaning, pressing, making sure that I am sending in books that are worthy, worthy of higher grades. And so uh, that failure rate of, of, you know, four books out of 49 I don't think that that's too bad. I really don't think that that's too bad. And it's just one of those things that the more you do it, the better you get at it. Uh, the more books you touch, the more books you examine, the more books you grade, the, the better uh, you are with those respective skills. So those are uh, all of my uh, embarrassing moments from CGC uh, that I care to share in this video. <laughs> So I'm going to transition to a couple of other uh, things that have kind of come up over the last couple of weeks. Uh, one of the questions that I've been asked repeatedly is around COAs and just information that is given to someone with a comic, uh, if that comic is a, a limited edition or something like that, or if it's signed, like the COAs and things like that from uh, J. Scott Campbell and other artists. People are asking, do they send those in when they send the book in to be graded? The answer is no. CGC doesn't want uh, the COAs or any other documentation sent to them. All they want is the comic. And they have a massive database where they're able to go and to figure out everything that they need to figure out uh, with that book. And do they make mistakes? Yes, they do make mistakes. But my point is, is that sending the COAs in won't help you at all. In fact, all they will do is to separate them from the book. They will bundle those up. And when your books come back to you, they will be in a sleeve or an envelope or something like that. And they will just return all of that stuff to you. So you're probably better off just holding those materials when you send your comics in. Another, the, another question that I've received from people is around invoices and how I actually send my comics into CGC. I want to say that an invoice is about, a full invoice is about 25 comics. I think that that is correct. 
But generally what I do is I try to send in as many comics as I possibly can to reduce my my shipping costs, my per book shipping costs, right? Because if you take whatever the cost of shipping is and you divide it amongst the individual books, the more books you have, the lower the shipping cost is per book versus uh, all of the shipping being assigned to one particular comic. Again, it's like a, a mental exercise, if you will. So I try to send in as many comics as I can, but what I do when I do my submission is I try to send like kind books on the same invoice. So if I'm sending in modern comics, I send all modern comics on one invoice. If I'm sending in some Silver Age books, I will send Silver Age books on a separate invoice, okay? And the reason for that is that your modern books and your Silver Age books, or those two different tiers, will move through CGC at different rates. The modern book moves through much faster than uh, the the older books, right? They move in or move through at a much slower pace. So it's a good way to just kind of organize yourself by having one invoice per tier. That is like the best way to do it. Now, with that said, one other thing to consider are the services that you are using. So if you were sending in, let's just say 20 modern books, but only 10 of those books are getting cleaned and pressed, you'll have to decide whether you do separate invoices for those because likewise, some of those books will actually go in to CGC, but be given to CCS to be processed, to be cleaned and pressed before they are brought back to CGC. So you'll have 10 that'll go to CGC and go through and you'll have another 10 that go to CCS and then have to come back. Those books are going to move through the process at completely different rates, right? Your your books that go to get clean and pressed, that might be a month long process by itself before those comics are actually graded. Whereas the 10 that you sent in just to be graded are going to move into that process, into the queue much, much faster than those books that are getting pressed. So you have to think about how are you sending your books in, what ages, what tiers, right? And then also what services you are actually using. Now, with all of that said, what I will do is regardless of how many tiers I actually have, I will actually bundle uh, all or invoices, I should say, no matter how many tiers or invoices, I will bundle all of my books together to send them into CGC. So for example, if I have five modern books, I will put five modern books into a Gemini shipper and I will tape to that Gemini shipper a invoice for those five modern books. If I have uh, another five Silver Age books, I will put those books in a separate Gemini shipper and I will take to that Gemini shipper an invoice for those five books. I will then take those two Gemini shippers, put them together and put them into one box and send all 10 out to CGC. The reason for that, it reduces my overall per book shipping cost because now I'm sending a total of 10 books instead of five you know, books in two different shipments. So it's just a way to kind of reduce my, my overall cost for myself to send books in. Now, with that said, depending upon the, the number of invoices you send in and how you send them in, does not matter. Those books are all going to come back as separate shipments, right? So your, your modern books are gonna come back on in one box. Your Silver Age are gonna come in in a separate box. Those books that were sent in to be clean, pressed, and then graded will come in in a different box. The reason for that is, again, all of these books are moving through CCS and CGC at different rates. And so as they move through the process, they are bundled up and shipped out. So you want to make sure that you are thinking about what are your costs, especially when it comes to shipping, because you could be charged 25 bucks or whatever it is to have those books sent back to you times three. So you want to think about how you're sending your books in, the services that you're asking for, how many books are being sent, and then how those books will actually be returned to you. The last thing you want is to you know get one book at a time and incur shipping for every single one of those books when you could have bundled them together on one invoice or two invoices or three invoices, uh, fuller invoices, and then sent them in. So these are the things that you want to kind of think about. And certainly if any of this is unclear, post up a comment in the comment section, reach out to me on Instagram, and I can help you walk through it a little bit more. 
but hopefully this is uh, relatively clear for folks. Uh, so with that, I am going to wrap this video up. I wanted to show you guys some of my embarrassing moments and also to answer a couple of questions, at least I hope I did, around how I actually submit books into CGC, what's needed, what's not needed, all that kind of stuff. But I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I want to encourage you to leave a thumbs up on the video, leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. And before I let you go, one last thing that I will mention is if you are thinking about sending books into CGC, I recommend the premium package. The reason for that is that that premium package will run you $149 to get that level of membership. But the great thing is that you then get a credit for $150 on your account that you can actually use towards grading comics. That credit is applied on the back end, so you won't see it when you're submitting your books, but you should see it when you are actually invoiced on the back side. And so this is just a great way of essentially making the membership free because those fees can be used towards grading. They cannot, however, be used for cleaning and pressing because that is a CCS service and not a CGC service. The other wonderful thing is that you actually get that same credit every single year. In subsequent years, oftentimes CGC actually offers a discount on the membership. So membership will go from $149 for premium down to a $120-ish, but you still get $150 credit uh, that you can use on books that you are sending in. So that, again, this is why I recommend this. And if you do decide to get a membership, there is a, a link in the description of every single one of my videos. It is an affiliate link. If you click that affiliate link and do your membership, uh, CGC actually gives a couple of bucks back to the channel, which I use to get books uh, uh, graded and slabbed and then ultimately shown here on the channel. Uh, so if you do do that, I want to say thank you uh, because it goes a long way towards helping me to defray some of the cost of continuing to do uh, submissions and of course videos for you guys. But as I said, there, there, there is uh, some wonderful content, I think, on the channel that will certainly help you as you think your way through how to submit uh, these books, but you can certainly reach out to me should you have any questions. Take care.